remembering Steve Poole from the larger-than-life persona on television. That was one of the keys to his success. He just let it flow, and he had so much personality. To his humble and approachable demeanor off camera. And he just was so kind. And you'd see him, and you just knew you, that he was warm. From the devoted charity work. Because that was something Steve wanted to do. He didn't have to do it. And he did it because he believed in children and gave them back. To the unbreakable bond he forged with his co-workers. The camaraderie was so good. We became great friends. Friends. Legendary doesn't come close to encapsulating the impact of Steve Poole, but it's a good place to start. Thanks for joining us tonight on a special edition of Come On News at 6. By now, all of you have heard that our dear friend and your friend, Steve Poole, passed away last week. We've all dreaded this evening, as you can imagine. Steve spent more than 40 years here at Como when he spent his entire life in Seattle and Bellevue. He was such a big part of the fabric of Western Washington. He was much more than a weatherman. He transcended that and became really a true icon. Steve was beloved. For the next hour, we are going to honor Steve's life and legacy. We'll take you behind the scenes so you can know the Steve Pool that we knew. And we'll look back on an incredible career. And as heartbroken as we are about losing our friend, tonight is a celebration, a time to be amazed and thrilled by what Steve meant to all of us. We start with a bird's eye view of his life and career and what an incredible ride it was. Steve Poole was dazzling. As a professional, as a person, as a husband and father, absolutely dazzling. Steve was a local kid. He grew up in South Seattle. He attended Taiyi High School. I had a very good teacher when I was a junior in high school, and she got me interested in debate, and I didn't even know what the heck it was. But she said, come on in here, you can learn about this. And I walked in there, and these people were, you know, they're making a point, and they're, you know, and they're just beautifully speaking. And I thought, wow, that's cool. And it didn't have anything to do with TV. It was just um, how eloquent are you? Can you make an argument? Can you take a bunch of information and drill it down to where an average person can understand what the heck you're talking about? He started working at Como Television as an intern while he was still a college kid at the University of Washington, 1974. He worked on a show called Action Inner City. And uh, I got a chance to interview people, and it, it wasn't something that, I think they put it on like at 3.30 in the morning or something, you know? <laughs> Today's show is about a remarkable documentary on blacks in the Northwest. In 1977, they hired him full time, First of all, right out of school. It was a stroke of genius. I, at, the, at first, really couldn't believe it. You know, I'm a little black kid from South Seattle, you know? Head looked like a milk dud. <laughs> I mean, I, I was not. You I can't was, say that. <laughs> Maybe you may cut that out. But, oh, but I'm not way, cutting anything. <laughs> well, let's just say I wasn't a matinee idol. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be back with more of Window in just a moment. At first, nobody was quite sure exactly what to do with the skill set. They tried him at sports. UCLA Bruins won the Pac-10 track and field title today at Husky Stadium. They tried him at hard news. <laughs> then in 1984, he became Como's chief weatherman. And it was a natural fit. Here you are, right in this area. And there's one little rascal here. It was at the time when Ray Ramsey was about to retire. They hadn't found anybody else to do it. And I think it really was a case where they said, uh, I had Poole do it for a couple days <laughs> while we're looking around, you know. And I got up there and I did. I said, God, this was kind of, this was kind of cool. And here is a young gentleman to watch that Stephen because he's, uh, he's, he's, he's marvelous. He was comfortable. Let's talk about our situation, because you know you want to know, you're saying, Steve, come on, what's going to happen now? And smooth. Sunny, how's that for you? It's going to be nice tomorrow. The weekend, well, let's talk about that when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> and charismatic. Hello, everybody. I'm Steve Poole, and welcome to Front Runners. He hosted a show called Front Runners. Got him out in the field, meeting people and interacting. I'm Steve Poole, your host. Tonight, we're going to introduce you to a phenomenon called breakdancing. This little guy who we featured 
That's Bruno Mars. What is it about Elvis that you like? I like his singing, he's dancing on his lip. His what? His lip. He was so good that Good Morning America regularly used him as a filly. Steve Poole in from KLMO in Seattle with the weather, Steve. Thanks, Charlie John. Good morning, everybody. He was so stylish that Esquire put him in their magazine. He had so much energy that he wrote a book. He was so warm that he hosted Como's Miracle Season for Children's Hospitals. We're happy that you and your family could join us to help make holiday miracles happen for kids' sake. He was so cool that he could channel the immortals and pull it off. Steve got so good at being in front of a camera that you simply couldn't get any better. And we can kind of see this on the satellite image here. That was the thing I liked the most, was to be able to take all that disparate information and know that you're getting through to people so they can make a decision about their lives. That's what got me. That's what really got me. He loved ice cream. He was one of those slow golfers who took forever to hit the ball. He was a historian of sorts. He spoke German fluently. He was forever fascinated by aviation. Website Wherever there was good food, just he wasn't far it. away. I'm about to dish you up some of our sweet potato chili that I made here. So you know who loves berries and biscuits? Oh, go figure. Steve, this I guy. Orange uh, barbecue sauce that we put on there. Oh, man, that looks so good. And it was incredibly easy to make him laugh. They could put a dirt clod out there on the 4 o'clock show. Steve will taste it and go, oh, my God, that's the best thing. I've ever tasted. Best thing I've ever had. <laughs> he loved being Steve Poole, loved being alive. Everything is fine at the fair. We're getting along great down here, Dan, Kathy. Back yeah, to just you. don't go get a bacon burger or anything like that, Steve. No. Hey, oh, this is Steve. Yeah, you <laughs> should never have brought that up. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Kathy, you gotta be careful. <laughs> Steve adored his family, his wife Michelle and his daughters Lindsay and Marissa. When he talked about his girls, all three of them, he beamed with pride. In his own way, Steve gently pushed down barriers. He was the first black person to join the Seattle Golf Club, but he belonged to everyone. I count my lucky stars being able to come out of college, go right to a station in my hometown, work my way up through the through the ranks to, to where I am now. And yeah, that's luck. But at the same time, to me, luck is where hard work meets opportunity. As long as I can keep doing what, I, what makes me happy, I'm happy. In 2019, after 42 amazing years, he retired from television. And on his last show, he spoke from the heart. It was really come down to this wonderful place where we live and being able to live here and raise a family in a place like this. I've accomplished it, so I'm ready to go on to the next level. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. How do you sum up a man who was so good for so long, so loved, so trusted, so successful in front of and away from the camera? His career was a triumph. His life, the entire journey was a triumph. I'd say 99.9% of the things that I was able to do here was so far, so hugely more than I ever dreamed in my wildest dream. Really, uh, to be able to do this business and to be able to be successful with it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of that. I truly am the luckiest man on the planet. And I thank you. Steve Poole was in a word, dazzling, absolutely dazzling. We're joined now by Molly Shannon, Shannon O'Donnell, and such an incredible life and career. And Eric, to watch it unfold like mm -hmm. that, you can really see what a guy, what a man. 
What we, an icon. We almost, after a while, he was so good for so long yeah. that we almost took it for granted. Yeah. Oh, definitely did. Steve wrote yeah. a book. Steve's right. having a <laughs> golf tournament. Steve's <laughs> doing amazing things. Steve's in Esquire magazine. Well, yeah. of course he's in a. Mm -hmm. uh, we took that for granted so good, so long. It was really special, Eric, to watch all of that unfold. I can't believe you're making us come on. Shannon and I have to join the two of you right here at this moment when, you know, I mean, all the tears are coming out. It, that was a great look back at, at just little slices of an incredible, yeah. incredible career in life. And such a humble man, too. Yeah. The very definition, the epitome of humble and kind, yes. a gentle man and the tagline that he put out on social media and this is so steve was just an ordinary guy <laughs> with an interesting job but we all know he was not an ordinary guy he was extraordinary and as you said dazzling you guys the other day i was in the the como archive room mm -hmm. joe wren's dungeon mm -hmm. in the basement and i found this box of photos these pictures mm -hmm. that you're looking at right now there was this box and at the bottom of the box was this envelope of like oh. 40 or 50 photos mm -hmm. they had hired a photographer to follow steve around and these are like a little slice of his mm -hmm. life his daily life here it's so great to see these you were saying when you found those pictures like you as you said it was at the bottom you thought um, i guess i'm not going to find I, any i couldn't pictures find anything here, right? and there was this little gem at the bottom so he would go about his business he loved this business. Yes, he was he so proud of this team and what we did on a nightly basis. And you know, Shannon, he's in there doing that thing <laughs> yep. and he's taking <laughs> information and he's using it in a common way. He spoke the way Absolutely. people speak. He said that there where he learned how to do that by taking the debate class, boiling down that complex information into something everybody could understand. He did it better than anybody every single night. We'd sit and discuss the weather and it'd get pretty complicated. Steve would go out there and just spin it in such a next door neighbor sort of way that made everybody understand it and feel comfortable. You know, so many people welcome Steve into their homes every night to watch him deliver the forecast. In fact, really, several generations of viewers watch Steve. Come with Michelle Esteban joins us live with reaction from the community now. Michelle? Well, hi there, guys. I can tell you what you already know. People came for Steve's forecasting, but they stayed for his personality, that affinity that he had for kindness in the community. The way he treated people on and off the air made him everyone's forecaster. Now, I'll be back in uh, just a little bit here. It is hard to believe that Steve Poole, who seemed timeless, has left us, and yet he will always be our forever weatherman. I loved Steve Poole. He was one of my favorite weathermen, and I, I love watching the weather. <laughs> She remembers, like so many Como viewers, the moment she heard of his passing, a shock to many. I literally stopped and was like, oh, he was great. The great part about Steve Poole, he took his work seriously, but didn't take himself too seriously. He was so funny and so fun. Yeah, like the time he handled the sinking chair with aplomb. Where are you going? My chair broke. Hey. Or the many times a camera, good music, and Mr. Fun collided. If you use this, I'm going to kill you. I love Steeple when he would come on to the 4 o'clock news and he and Mary Nam would have the trivia. And he would always try to guess and I'd be trying to guess. He was funny. He just explained things really well and really got you what you needed. For Betsy Daniels and family, Steve was their go-to for weather. They relied on him for 30 years. We all did. And kids like Ross Dam remembers waiting for those magic words. Translation, snow day. When I think about Steve Poole, I just think about how warm he was and how he was such an important part of the community. I hardly say go for it. From festivals um, at the Seattle Center to Education Day at the ballpark and all those no, school visits it. in between. Right. And, and I remember Steve coming to our school. It was elementary school and an assembly. Um, it was about weather. 
And I remember there was a song and dance. As soon as we found out that he died, my husband put on his shirt that says, Steve Poole, I make it rain. Steve forecasted with his own personal style and that megawatt smile. Just when he would come on the air, his smile. He was always happy, no matter the weather. He made it easy to watch, said longtime viewer Edwin Lambert. He talked to you. It's not watching the camera, but he was watching you. He was talking to you directly. And that is something you don't make up. You have that aura. We're going to talk to around. He had what we call in this business the it factor. He had it in spades. He was magnetic, engaging, great at his job, and fantastic with people. I'm going to always cherish my time working with Steve. It is such an honor, actually, to have this assignment today. And I know hearing from all of you really helps all of us process this tremendous loss. Back to you. Absolutely, Michelle. And so great to hear from some of those people. A, I need to get one of those shirts. Yes, <laughs> right. And B, the guy at the end who talked yeah. about the the way he conversed with the public. He was easy, mm -hmm. right? He was comfortable. Yep. We all strive for that in this mm -hmm. business. It's much harder to do than you would think, but he was comfortable in front of the camera, comfortable in his own skin. Mm -hmm. And can we all agree on this? He was fun. Yeah, yeah. so oh, fun. He was a fun, fun guy. Funny. I mean, look at fun him. Fun and funny. <laughs> that was always Steve, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, talking about just how professional and how good and how natural he was, this is a really little story, but it was so meaningful to me. There was one time in the 5 o'clock news, I bungled something. Like, it was a big flub, and I was really embarrassed and kicking myself. I can't even remember what it was. I just remember how upset I was. And Steve came over in the commercial break and he said, Malls, it's halfway to Mars. <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter, right? We all have those, but nobody will ever see it again. It was such a little thing, but like Steve, this guy who's just so good, it made me feel so much better. That's funny to hear, because I want your opinion on this, Shannon. When I would see him sometimes, he'd be down in the dumps and he'd be... Mm busting mm -hmm. his own chops because yes. he flubbed on the air Something and I'd say, yeah, Steve, right. what he goes, oh, I'm better than that. I messed up on the such and such. I'm like, Steve, you've done 10,000 yes, shows. Yeah. You yeah. know, thousands. And it's so funny that he gave you that advice, but you right. know what right. a perfectionist yes. he was he for himself. He was hard on himself, believe yeah. it or not. And like we said, it's very hard to come right through the screen like that. Mm -hmm. And he was. People say he was talking to me when he was doing the weather. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he was. If there was one little word he'd mess up, he'd sit and, you know, think about it he was perfect he was perfect just the way he was and we all loved him you know every single night he, he was, was so fantastic. generous generous mm -hmm. with his encouragement yeah. generous with the compliments mm -hmm. and he loved to share that fun persona of his you know he and he also the energy this guy had oh, to so do that you look yeah. at the list of things he was a part of Incredible. singing and the golf tournament and the, you know all those things he did he always had something going. He liked the juice. Yeah. He liked the yes. juice of this business, you know, doing something, getting in front of that camera, getting with people, talking to kids. He had a blast in this business. And as I said in the, the initial story, he, I think he just liked being Steve Poole. He I really think he loved it. And we all loved him for it. We are just getting started with our tribute to Steve Poole. Coming up next, we'll talk about his charity work. But first, here's a trip into the Como archives and a 1985 interview where Steve talked about his humble demeanor. If there is a, an approachability or a or humility to, to my work, it's because that deep down inside, I'm still that person who would be voted the most unlikely to go into television, you know? <laughs> Sunny, how's that for you? It's gonna be nice. I want to welcome you back, and as we celebrate and remember our friend Steve, your friend Steve, we also have to focus on the work that he did outside the studio. It was a big part of who he was. Steve volunteered with countless nonprofits, raising millions of dollars that helped our community. Camo's Molly Shedd is here to highlight a couple of the organizations that were closest to Steve's heart. Uh, Mary and Eric, I got to see Steve's passion up close for this sort of work. He and I hosted programs together for Seattle Children's Hospital for many years. But Steve was already at it well before I came along, hosting those shows with our dear friend and colleague, Kathy Gertzen. And now, your hosts for The Miracle Season, Kathy Gertzen and Steve Poole. 
Well, Kathy, here we are again. This is our 13th Miracle Season. From the holiday special Miracle Season to the spring telethon called Miracle Makers. This is more than just a birthday celebration. This is our 23rd annual wow. Miracle Makers broadcast. I think we've done... Every Almost one all of them. <laughs> I yeah, think so too. Steve and Kathy were fixtures supporting Seattle Children's Hospital. But the stars of the shows were the children. Is it important for you too what Children's has done? Kids like Cole Hardman, who spent his first year of life at Children's and was just seven years old when he first appeared at Steve's side. Cole came back year after year and was inspired by Steve's commitment. Seeing the community come together to rally around a cause, like I think that's what stuck with me most because that was something Steve wanted to do. He didn't have to do it. And he did it because he believed in children and giving back. And so through that, I was really excited to, to continue that kind of legacy. Cole now works for the Seattle Children's Foundation. He and Steve remained friends. He just had that warmth and just, uh, pleasant to make everyone feel uh, special with that one-on-one -on -one time. Steve carried his support for children's out of the studio and onto the golf course. He hosted an annual golf tournament with NFL Hall of Famer and former Seahawk Warren Moon. It was perfect though, right? Cameron didn't see it. You know, that was really good right up to the last part. <laughs> when the woods got in the way, that happened. <laughs> Moon posted on X this week, mourning the passing of his longtime friend, saying Steve's philanthropic commitment was unmatched. I love all of it. I love what we do. This has been something that's been a lifelong dream for me. Steve also dedicated decades to Seattle's Museum of Flight. He was on the museum's board of trustees for 24 years. He described himself as a kid in a candy store, sharing the stage with space pioneers. But the museum CEO remembers Steve best for the work he did behind the scenes. And like he did for so many not-for-profits, not just us, he uh, helped us raise funds uh, and was there for us. But as I said, I, I, I think the most important things he did were before he stepped out uh, to engage with the public because he just made it a better scenario every single time he came into the room. It was at one of those events that Steve shared where his passion for service came from. I grew up about three miles from here. My father was a retired sergeant in the U.S. Army. My mother was a, a homemaker. And they taught me an awful lot about what you need to do in your community and how you can pay it back. Through his parents' lessons, Steve wound up doing much more than paying it back. He raised millions of dollars, and he brought smiles to the faces of the countless people he helped. And more words directly from Steve about why community work was so important to him. I came across something that he wrote, talking about looking into the faces of people he helped. He wrote, real people shaking your hand or giving you a hug and thanking you for making their lives better is an amazing experience. And I mean, imagine how many of those mm. hugs and handshakes Steve had, right? Oh my goodness. Uh, millions of dollars yeah. uh, raised through for Seattle Children's, through the Lenny Wilkins he worked with yep. as well, um, and Warren Moon, and I uh, just, it, it's endless. It's an endless list. Wow. I want to bring in longtime Como anchor and reporter Connie Thompson, who joins us now. Boy, he was a dear, dear friend to he you. He was. I think, I was thinking about Steve, I thought, you know, he's like a work brother. He was yeah. our work brother. Um, you have different things going on in your life, but you're in the same family. And you've talked before about the trips, but every now and then we would have family trips where the anchor team would anchor go retreats. away someplace, and we'd call it a retreat. And um, this was years ago, so I think it was even before It was before all me. Of you I didn't were get here. to go on those trips before um, I was born. <laughs> Well, we won't go there, but I can think of one time, and, and Bruce was there, Kathy was there, mm -hmm. and um, Carrie Brock, and we were at this place. I won't disclose the places because hopefully by now they've forgotten what I'm going to tell you, but, you know, Steve loved to sing, and, we, and a lot of us were singers, and, and my husband and Bruce, and we got together, and we had had a nice dinner, and, and now we're in the room, playing cards, just chatting, and someone got the idea to sing a song and harmonize. And we oh. would sign each other, you sing this note, and you sing this note, and we were singing away, and it was nice, tame songs. We weren't going wild. And then pretty soon, we got a phone call. <laughs> 
because the neighbors <laughs> didn't appreciate our harmonizing <laughs> as much as we were having Wildly fun. Well, it might have been about one o'clock in the morning. Hey, I've but, heard um, you sing. I understand. <laughs> Those, it was those fun times that you remember the family part of why we all make yeah. sure we have tissues because, you know, we've lost a sibling, mm. um, our, our work sibling. And, and as heartbreaking as it is, it's so heartwarming to look back at all of these examples of why we have the feeling that we do. Connie, I was on a, a bunch of those trips, and the one thing I would say is... He knew how to have fun. He did. He would loosen up and have a ball and giggle. And you saw him in some of those pictures doubled over laughing. I mean, the guy was a hoot. You ever get in that situation where between him and, and Dan with his puns and you start laughing and pretty soon you're laughing and then nobody can remember what we're laughing at. We're just <laughs> all laughing so much. A lot of fun. And I will tell you, when I think about all the things that you all know about Steve and, and his work persona and his charm and his loveliness that just exuded love through the camera. There was the pride when he met his wife-to-be, oh, Michelle, Michelle, being at the wedding, dancing at their wedding on New Year's Eve, the birth of their children and their accomplishments, and, and all of that was what Steve embraced, too, and I just, I always have that big smile was never so big when those happened. Lindsay and Marissa, yes. the lights of his life, and of totally. course, Michelle. Yeah. Hey, our celebration of Steve will continue in just a couple of minutes, but first, a special moment for Steve. He officially retired nearly four years ago to the day. During that celebration, our former news director, Bill Dolman, formally announced that the Como Weather Center would be known as the Steve Pool Weather Center, calling Steve a Pacific Northwest icon. Pool brought a lot of joy to all of us throughout the year, but that was especially the case during the holiday season. Come on, Steve McCarran shows us one small way you can honor Steve over the coming weeks with light. Well, here at Como Plaza, I love to come down and look at the holiday decorations and lights that we put up around here. And just like I like to do when I was a kid, I still love driving around to look at all the extravagant holiday lights displays across the region. And I know that's something that Steve Poole loved to share with you, too. Looking for the true spirit of Christmas? Come here to the Halfaday House in Puyallup. Vicki and Rick Johnson have created a... Mel and Gay Fisher had decided... Bob Meyer decided years ago to extend his Christmas display. When I was growing up, I loved watching Steve Poole showcase some of the most extravagant holiday lights displays across our region each weeknight right here on Como 4. He did it for years, and it was one of the many ways he brought a lot of joy to all of us, particularly during the holiday season. This year, we have brought Como's Parade of Lights back, and I think this is a small but really great way to honor Steve. Check out this photo that Sarah Anderson submitted through our chime-in page of that lit-up tree on the dock with that near full moon rising above Lake Whatcom. And we're not sure where these are from, but Kelly Mendenhall says it's set to 20 songs and includes more than 30 trees and bushes. If you know of an extravagant holiday lights display, you spot one in your neighborhood, snap a photo or video of it and send it to us. We're going to share as many of these as we can leading up to Christmas next month. To submit your photos, just head to comodews.com slash chime in. And be sure to include a description of where that display is so all of us can check it out. Steve McCarran, Come On News. When you sit right next to somebody for years in the television business or any business and you see them in good times and bad, you get to know that person well. Our former anchor Dan Lewis knew Steve about as well as anybody. Dan and I sat down the other day to talk about the great times we shared with Steve at work and also away from work. Steve... Well, he was a great guy. He was so talented. He was friendly. He was funny. He, uh, he loved this community. He loved Como. Yeah. He loved his family most of all. Uh, and right now, his wife Michelle, his daughters Lindsay and Marissa, my heart goes out to them. But Steve knew how to have a good time. Steve <laughs> enjoyed life. Steve was, uh, gosh, just such a great guy. He. Uh, when he did the weather, he took it seriously, but he also knew how to have fun with it. That made it so much easier to watch. It was always informative, but also could be very entertaining. 
You and I were looking at some of those photos, a sequence of him cracking up. Yes. And he was easy to make laugh, he was. wouldn't you say? He was. And he loved to laugh. Yes. He would just squeal with laughter. Yes. And he had a great sense of humor, too. I mean, he told me some family stories about his, his old grandmother and his aunt, and he would go on, and he was just so, so funny and entertaining. And, I mean, just such a good guy. He was, uh, he, he loved the team we had. I think more than... Any of the people in that original anchor team, Steve was the one who was always, you know, cheering us on, saying, oh, we're doing such a great job. He was so yeah. proud of what we were doing, uh, as I was, and we all were, but uh, most of all, we became, uh, the camaraderie was so good, we became great friends, and uh, right now I'm reflecting a lot about that original team. He had a thing, yes. didn't he? He yes. had a sparkle. He had that it factor, yes. and people just, they reacted yes. to it. I've said before, I think Steve Poole, deep down, was an entertainer. He just knew how to relate to people. Yeah. He was so talented. He could sing. He was so good at doing the weather. He was so relatable. People loved Steve Poole. I love Steve Poole. What a wonderful man he was. But yes, he was so talented. And he adapted at Como because originally I think he was in sports and then he was doing some feature stories. And then they said, well, let's put Steve on the weather. And boy, he knew how to do the weather. I always think about Steve. He, he did such a great job with the weather, but those days when, when we had a blizzard coming, we had bad weather. Steve was fired up, man. He would come into the newsroom, and he would make it so clear to everybody, this is what to expect, we got to do this, got to do that. He was on top of it. I feel like we knew Steve, the on-camera guy. We also knew Steve, the historian, the family guy, the friend, the goofball. We knew the, all those facets yes. of him. And I think a lot of people at home felt they knew him in many of those ways, too. They might not have known him personally with personal contact, but Steve was one of those guys that he didn't hide anything. He let his personality out there. I mean, that was one of the keys to his success. He just let it flow, and he had so much personality. So, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons I was with Steve so many times when people came up and they said, Steve, you're like your family to me. You yeah. go, Steve. Yeah. This community will remember Steve Poole for a long, long time, as he should be remembered. Wonderful guy, great weather forecaster, and just a, a value to the community for all he gave back. Great to hear from Dan. And can I just say this? He could have left here anytime he wanted. Yep. yep. That's for sure. Yeah. He was an entertainer. You know, weather just happened to be the venue yeah. where he ended up. But as you hear, he could have done just about anything. Could have gone and anywhere, done anything. And he success. stayed in his home city to do this thing that he loved to do here. That's right. Uh, let's talk about our favorite favorite moments. It's got to be Steve and the food for me mm -hmm. at 4 o'clock. Oh. That's and everybody's I, favorite I, moment. And I have That's to say, hers, none of that, all the fun that Steve injected into that show, that was not produced. That was not written in. And the fact that Steve would leave the weather center and then sneak up behind <laughs> him. Every yeah. time. Every time. I had a guest with food on and he wanted in on the treats. He genuinely loved it so much. And you know what, you guys, behind the camera, the producers did not like this. It took a lot of time. Right? <laughs> they did not her in this time. But and, everybody you know, else loved it. I mean, don't you still hear from yes. people who say, oh, Mary, I All loved it with you and Steve. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. One of my favorite memories. And I love, you know, just going out with Steve, anytime we'd be in public, it really was next level. It was like being out with Elvis or the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. or so everybody wanted to touch him, be a part of him. We'd go out, you know, back in the day, 4th of July, and everybody would want to come up. He'd take time to talk to everybody and shake their hand and hug them. And then more recently, we've been putting on Mariner's Weather Education Day. I think we have some pictures of the fun we'd have out there with all of the kids and just meeting people. At one point, we had bobbleheads that were made for us that they surprised us with on stage. And the look on his face he was just so excited to be out there and engaging with all the kids and it was just such a fun event every year we love putting that on how about you molly i think for me i have to go back to the seattle children's telethons there were several years there towards the end where steve and i both brought daughters I, my daughter and his oldest daughter Lindsay, came and would volunteer behind the scenes and so i got to see steve in that dual role of the tv guy yeah. and yeah. the proud mm -hmm. dad watching his daughter come i mean you know just helping out um and it 
it was just really special to be able to see him in both of those proud, proud moments at the same time. He loved those girls. I saw him today. They are so proud of him and are so overwhelmed at the reaction that this has all caused in our community. We're going to be back with more of our tribute to Steve in just a moment. But first, this is footage from the 1984 Christmas Eve at Poole's Place, (laughs) which won Steve one of his seven Northwest Regional Emmy Awards over his 42-year career. The Apple Cup was always a fun time of year for both Steve and the late Kathy Gertzen, who was a diehard coog. People loved it when they would go at it. And one of the most memorable battles came in 1995 when this happened. Kathy, during one of the newscasts, by bringing out members of the UW band to play the Husky fight song, Steve was loving every second, Kathy not so much, so Kathy got even in the most fitting way. was there everybody was having fun she not only brought out the WSU band but the cheerleaders as well but look look at Steve (laughs) he decided to jump out of his feet and then came a little strip tease action there for Steve in a husky jersey that was an awful lot of fun and sadly of course Kathy passed away in 2012 and at her memorial service she found a way to get the last word and I like to think that I helped just a little Kathy would be so proud of me right now. Put on the hat. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'm going to put on the hat. I have to tell you, this is the only thing we ever disagreed about. (laughs) Uh, But... This is for you, Kathy. I love you. (laughs) Oh, man, I know Steve hated putting that cougar hat on, but he loved Kathy and he had to do it. One of my favorite Steve Poole moments ever. Dang. Still ahead, a special message from the Poole family. As we've mentioned, Steve leaves behind his daughters, Lindsay and Marissa, and his wife, Michelle. The three of them have been, as you would imagine, absolutely overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and support from you these last few days. Michelle wanted to deliver a message to all of you as a way of saying thanks. We recorded it this morning. Here it is. Hi, uh, we're Steve's family. I'm Michelle, and these are our daughters, Lindsay and Marissa. And we just wanted to reach out and just say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your really kind messages and posts and pictures and memories. Uh, We're just really so overwhelmed at the response and um, don't even really have the words to put to what we're feeling and reading and it's been a lot and we are just so grateful. Um, It kind of reminds me of when Steve was diagnosed with cancer and the outpouring of love and messages at that time was... It, we were so grateful, and Steve would look at me and say, wow, for me? And I would say back to him, <laughs> yes, yeah, for, for you. you. The community loves you, and they care about you. And um, so I know in this instance, he would say the same thing, like, wow, for me? And now we're having to kind of say that ourselves about him. And it's just amazing to see the reflection back from what you all are thinking about him and we are taking it in and now we're going, wow, for him. So we're just so grateful and I just want to say thank you so much. Um, Our family thanks you, Steve's sister and her family thank you, the cousins and the family across the country down south and in the Midwest. I know they're paying attention and they are reading and they are seeing and we are all just so grateful. And you know, our broken hearts, I feel like 
are being really wrapped up by your warm thoughts and wishes and remembrances. And it really makes this time so much easier. And uh, I mean, our hearts are broken, don't be mistaken. <laughs> but I mean, this has just been uh, overwhelming and we are just so grateful. So thank you so, so much. Michelle nailed it in one take, just like Steve used to do. She asked that any donations in Steve's name be made to the Museum of Flight or Klein Gallon Hospice, which is in Seattle's Seward Park neighborhood. She said she's not sure she would have survived these last months without them. You can find more information about how to make a donation on our website, comonews.com. Well, this has been pretty amazing, hasn't it? Over the course of the past hour, you've heard all of us and a lot of other people talk about the impact Steve Poole has had on their lives and careers. It feels only fitting to end this tribute with some words from the man himself from his final broadcast in November 2019. And now I want to say something to the viewers. Throughout my career and the high parts and the low parts, the main thing I wanted to do was get some information to you so that you could make choices about your lives, all of your families, all of that. That was my main imperative. But in that process, I just kind of fell in love with doing this because I could go out and folks would come up to me and. You know, if I missed it, they'd give me a little bit of a razzing, but on the other side, you know, if I did a great job, uh, they would support me. And I know that you're out there. I know you are. And there's times when, <laughs> I'm thinking about a couple times when uh, I was driving uh, on I-5 and a guy pulled up next to me uh, on the freeway. We're both doing about 50 miles an hour. And, uh, uh, he looks over at me and, and he's, he's doing like, like, and I'm trying to think, what does that guy say? What's he saying? And he rolled down his line and said, you were wrong. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so a lot of folks have asked me, what am I going to do next? At this point, I'm not really sure because I've never had the opportunity to just sit down and really digest all that I've done. Because in this business, things roll along pretty quickly. And uh, it, it's old news, it's bye-bye. But I do know this. I still wanna be in the neighborhood. I still wanna continue my charity stuff. Uh, I'm very proud of that. And I wanna make sure that at the end, my wife, Michelle, my daughter, Lindsay, and my, my daughter, Marissa. Uh, I know they're proud of me, and I'm proud of them. But the reason why I did all this is not for myself. It was really come down to this wonderful place where we live, and being able to live here and raise a family in a place like this. I've accomplished it, so I'm ready to go on to the next level. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can see the love in that room as so many people gathered around Steve for hugs, high fives, and emotional goodbyes. It was a special moment for a special person. What an amazing man. He will never, ever be forgotten. Thanks for doing this. We love you, Steve. Bye-bye.